Hi, my name's Liam, and I love to drink craft beer. So much, in fact, that I decided to make a documentary on it. I have had the opportunity to visit some old breweries and some new ones. Some big ones and some small ones. I even had the chance to ride on a bus that drives you around to a bunch of different breweries in the surrounding area. So this is a story of my journey to find out just what makes craft beer in Southern Maine so special. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. My name is Bruce Forsley, and uh, welcome to Shipyard Brewing Company. Uh, my name is Zachary Poole, this is Don Littlefield. Uh, we run the main brew bus. Uh, we've been running the brew bus since uh, September 2012. Driving you to drink local. Chris, go get a look My name is Jesse Galkowski, and this is E.O. Geary Brewing Company. To get things started, what would a main beer documentary be without Shipyard? Shipyard is an award-winning brewery. Shipyard's Old Thumper was named first place as People's Choice in the Florida International Beer Festival. In the Stockholm Beer and Whiskey Festival, Shipyard's Bluefin Stout won gold. In 2007, Shipyard's Export Ale was named Best in Show at the San Diego Beer Festival. And that's just to name a few. Since 2000, Shipyard has won over 125 awards for their beer. Well, Shipyard started as a brew pub in Kennebunkport, Maine, which is today called Federal Jacks, opened in 1992. It was actually a real estate project that had a, uh, what you might call a typical bud bar, blue collar bar. And in an effort to improve the real estate, my cousin Fred, who was the founder, uh, asked Alan Pugsley if he'd be interested in coming down and helping him uh, uh, renovate this pub into a brew pub. Shipyard will do about 2.2 million cases of beer and soda this year. Now, as in many um, industries in the state of Maine, our business is cyclical. It peaks in the summer and the fall and drops dramatically in the winter. So for day-to-day -day production, I wouldn't really be able to give you an accurate number, but it's very safe to say that our business in the summer quadruples what we do in the winter. Well, my opinion on why people like Maine beer is, all, is high, high quality, for starters. Uh, we have several excellent breweries in the state of Maine, and as I mentioned earlier, access to very clean, pure water is a true benefit to making great beer. So, what brings all these people to Portland, Maine to drink craft beer? Well, there are at least 19 breweries in the Portland area alone, and over 40 more statewide. And with new breweries sprouting up just about every month, there is no way craft beer is going out of style anytime soon. It's really no secret that the people of Maine and those who travel here love their craft beer. Want to try some of Maine's amazing breweries but worried about driving? We'll hop on the big green bus with the motto, driving you to drink local. Welcome to the Maine Brew Bus! If you are traveling to Maine, or if you already live here, you need to go on the Maine Brew Bus and drink at some of Southern Maine's finest breweries. While on the tour, you have the opportunity to go behind the scenes and see how everything works. 
you'll also have the opportunity to meet some extremely knowledgeable people. It wasn't a great little uh, brewery supply store within, you know, uh, a continent away, you know, so... The brew bus has earned the awards for best brewery tours and best designated driver. The bus is even wheelchair accessible. This is the space where we do all of our barrel aged beers um, and our mixed fermentation, those tanks behind it. Um, and then we do, uh, so that's the blending part. All those taps will be opened up, blended together to make a finished product. And then bottles here, and the bottling part. We're one of the few tour operators in Portland that does operate year round. Uh, in the winter time, much less people around. So we operate primarily on the Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. But even still on those days, we're able to put in 12 different tour itineraries, with the, most of those being on, uh, on Saturdays, which is kind of our prime time. Uh, those are different, and they go to different places. But in the summertime, uh, everything changes. We turn into a seven-day-a-week company uh, with uh, about 20 different tour itineraries and options, uh, visiting a larger chunk of territory and going to more producers as their hours expand, as well as uh, there are definitely more people in town. And some examples of the tours that we, that we have, I guess probably the best example is your original tour, the flagship tour, which is called the Casco Fiasco. And that tour starts off by going to a, uh, what was a small brewery, and in two years short time has grown to be a, now a medium-sized brewery in the state of It's called Foundation Brewing Company. Uh, that tour then uh, moves down to East Bayside, to one of the anchors of uh, East Bayside's neighborhood, Rising Tide Brewing Company, and expanded tasting room experience there. Uh, the tour then continues on for a full group hub lunch at Sabega Brewing Company on 4th Street in Portland with even more beer. Then it finishes at Oxbow Blending and Bottling, which is on uh, Washington Avenue in a space that's very cool as I guess learn about uh, the specifics of uh, Belgian and French style farmhouse ales. That's one example of our tours. We have other tours that have uh, that feature more than just beer, as we've got a wide variety of distilled spirits, we've got kombucha. Honey wine, which is called mead, as well as ciders, and lots of other options for folks that want more than just beer. Well, I think it's really an extension of a uh, buy local movement, of uh, wanting to know your producers. You want to know the farmers when you go to the farmer's market. You want to know that the restaurants that you are uh, dining at are sourcing su sustainably. Um, people want to be closer to the producers, and I think uh, craft beer and other craft alcohols are really good examples. It, is, uh, it used to be that you'd go to your neighborhood brewery uh, back in the 1800s, and it's more and more becoming that as uh, breweries are locally owned, they're locally operated, and you can meet the producers, meet the owners, and see the process every time you visit the local brewery. Can you tell me a little bit of the history of beer in Maine? It kind of starts back in the 1840s, a working seafaring town filled with lots of rum that was, uh, molasses was sourced from the West Indies, and it traveled here by, uh, by ship. It was distilled into rum here locally to fortify the sailors, but also fortify the town. Uh, Mayor of Portland in 1851, Neil Dow, once he came into office, one of the very first things he did was enact a law that forbid the manufacture and sale of alcohol statewide. It became known as the Maine Law. It was kind of the template for the beginning of the Prohibition Movement, which of course uh, existed in nationally from 1920 to 1933. In the state of Maine, we continued uh, elements of the Maine law right up until 1934. So, from 1851 to 1934, Maine was essentially a dry state. The 50 years after we could legally make alcohol, uh, D.L. Geary Brewing Company started to do that in 1986. In 1988, we had our first brew pub with Gritty McDuff. In 1992, Shipyard be began operation and then moved here to Portland in 1994, and that's Maine's largest brewery. So. Uh, we have lots of history of making up for lost time. Those are three of the well-known ones, and we have over 70 statewide now, which we're really proud of. A bit smaller operation located in Saco, Maine is Barreled Souls. The brewery has a 50-gallon brewing system, and every beer is fermented and aged in oak barrels. Once you enter in through the doors, you are standing right where the brewers work, you can get a first-hand look at this amazing setup. Open five days a week, you can try 12 different rotating beers. Beer's been a big part of our lives, and so we've always kind of had the idea to open a brewery. Uh, my, my background is uh, industrial engineering. I worked as an engineer for 10 years. 
Um, I took a year off from school and worked as the assistant brewer at Federal Jack's Brew Pub in Tangle Court. Uh, been home brewing since you know, college. Um, so I have that little bit of professional experience. And then while I was in Texas, I actually got hired by a restaurant down there that wanted to become a brew pub. And they hired me to design the brewery and design all the beers. Um, and so I had had some experience and been home brewing for a long time. And Matt's background is all restaurant bar management. Well, I mean, it's been a long process, right? I mean, like, you know, Geary's opened in 86, I think. Uh, that was the first, you know, craft brewery in Maine. And then, you know, throughout the 90s, there was a big boom. Um, you know, I think part of the reason it's so popular now is that people really know how to brew well now. There, it took a long time for people to learn, learn it. You know, it was mostly the, the home brewing community that really kind of figured out how to make, you know, great interest and unique uh, creative beers. And, just that process of learning and you know, collaboration has has led to where we are now with all, all these amazing beers and all this fun stuff to try. And, you know, it ties in with the whole kind of do-it-yourself slash organic food, you know, know the source of your ingredients and all that sort of uh, movement that's been happening in food and, and, uh, in general. And so I, I think it's just Uh, we brew 15 gallon batches, so uh, and we typically brew two beer, two batches a day. So we do 100 gallons, which is three, three and a half barrels. Uh, a barrel is a brewing terminology. You measure a volume, it's 31 gallons. Uh, so we'll, we'll brew, you know, sometimes we'll brew 10 batches in a week. Uh, sometimes we go like five. So if it was an average of say seven, that's seven times 15. And so, so like 10 to 12 barrels a week. So that's, 
that's pretty different. Um, we have a beer called Rosalita that we make that's a really light blonde ale that we ferment. We uh, do a secondary fermentation with agave nectar and then move that into the conditioning tanks and do a similar process to what I was describing with the bacon, but we use the viscous flowers. Kind of put them in a bag and let them like sit in the beer. So that infuses this really amazing like uh, magenta almost like color to the beer and incorporates a floral that would be aromatic in flavor. Um, I don't know, I can go on. <laughs> yeah, Maine has definitely made a name for itself for being a, a destination for craft beer. I think we're five or six on uh, breweries per capita, so that kind of puts us into a category. Um, and I think we're known for, I think we're known for high quality goods in general as a state. I feel like that's kind of a brand that the state has, uh, be it food production or um, material goods. Uh, and, and now beer for sure. Um, so yeah, just the quality of the, uh, it's just kind of what Maine, is, is the image of Maine as a state in general, it's just been a you know, fresh, great water source, you know, the water is fantastic here, it's great for brewing. Um, and the collab, yeah, just the collaboration between the breweries and kind of the companies with each other, and in the end, we all just end up making a much better product because it's, it's like we have a barley wine that we're aging. We're just really, it's the kind of beer that myself and my co-owner Matt like, really love. And we're just, we're really excited to be able to like, have those beers start coming out on a regular basis. We're actually going to bottle those, so it'll be the first thing that we package and uh, uh, you know, to go for a while. Besides for hours, so that's the first thing we bottle. And so, uh, yeah, the whole barrel aging process, it's something we really want to be known for. And we do a lot of it, you know, we fill, we, we have no 50. This is where it all began, D.L. Geary Brewing Company. They began in 1983 and now brew 13 different English and Scottish style beers. Geary's was the first brewery in Maine, so make sure you stop into this historical site, say hey, and grab a beer. So it took them a few years to get the recipe going, to get the brewery up and running. Uh, but that makes DL Geary Brewing the first on the East Coast, which is pretty cool for micro and craft brew. Um, yeah, so ever since then, um, he's been brewing English and Scottish style ales, trying to keep the history of the English pale ale alive. And he's been pretty successful with it, I'd say. A lot of people know Geary's up in Maine, for sure. I would say that uh, pale ales are flagship. Everybody knows that with the lobster logo on it. But after that, he came out with the Hampshire Special Ale, the HSA, and I think that's kind of a crowd favorite. It's a little bit stronger. Uh, it's based on an English strong ale, so it's about 7%. Um, and a lot of old timers up in Maine say, oh, I've been drinking the HSA since before you were born, kid. Like, that's the one for me, so. But people are going for a little more of a roasty, toasty flavor. They want to try the HSA. It's got a little bit of a heavier body. Um, beyond that, I'd say the Geary Summer Ale is something that a lot of people look forward to. Um, we just released it at the beginning of April. So that's a Kolsch recipe, kind of got more of a spice to it. That's another popular one as well. Uh, but we are expanding. We're experimenting with new recipes in our pilot system, which is kind of cool. So we're trying out some uh, different IPAs, different hop flavors, and we're also trying some different stouts as well. So you gotta, you gotta follow the market, you know, wherever it goes, you gotta evolve and adapt and try new things. Though we were the first craft brewery, now I think there's over 60 in the state. Um, so there's, a, there's definitely a lot of happy, healthy competition going on. You look around even this industrial park where Allagash and Bissell Brothers and Austin Street and Foundation are set up, and sometimes those guys have a line out the door on weekends. People are all about trying new experimental brews a lot these days. So while we're keeping the traditional English style pale ale alive, um, we also have to try new things just to keep people coming in the door, especially the younger beer connoisseurs these days, the hop heads, they want to see what we can do um, with our style of yeast, our pale malt, and our hop profile. You get something completely different every time you brew. Um, so I think 
it's important to keep the brewing tradition alive that we started in 1986, but we'd be crazy not to experiment on our pilot system and try some new batches once in a while. I think everybody wants to get their hands on craft beer, whether they're making it, drinking it, tasting it, spitting it out. You want to see what people can do, and whoever you are, whatever experience you have, whatever flavor you're going for, um, every batch comes out different. So it's it's kind of a journey to find your favorite beer, and you don't always end up liking the beers that your best friends like. Um, you can go to these brewery lines and someone who you thought you were like best beer buddies with, you know, you agree on everything. His favorite is completely on the other end of the spectrum than your favorite. So with each brewery making a different beer, with these home brewers coming out with cool recipes and seeing a lot of success with those small batches and then being able to start their own um, and expanding and getting bigger and bigger, I don't know where the breaking point is. I don't know if anyone does. I think there's so much beer thirst and there's so many creative brewers that if it just keeps going and going, I mean, there could be a brewery per person in me in, you know, 30 years or something like that. But uh, when you look around here, if you don't brew beer, it's almost like, well, what are you wasting your time doing then, man? Why not? <laughs> so it's a good time for beer, definitely, especially in Maine. We just got voted Portland the number one craft brew city in the world, so that's a big deal. And I think this is the East Coast's time to shine. The West Coast has been doing it for a long time, and now we're coming back with the one too much, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> it is a, a crazy little grown-up playground for beer drinkers. I mean, you get off the bus, you get off out of the car, and you park, and you're able to walk within a quarter mile to five different breweries and a distillery. Can't let that go by the wayside. Like, we do collaborations with them, whether we're barrel aging in some of their whiskey barrels, or they're doing a uh, brew to kind of top secret with one of our HSA batches right now, so they're working on distilling that. Uh, but when it comes to beer, what I think is really special about this industrial park is just how varied it is. Luckily, every brewery is doing something different, so that makes for a pretty good tour if you're making your way around Allagash with the wild saisons and the Belgian style ales, um, Bissell's crazy hoppy and delicious foundation austin street they have some cool stouts and some ipas plus gary's has got the pale ale english style malty stuff on lock so it's like depending on where you go and when you end up in which order you do the breweries in you're gonna have a pretty crazy day for your palate i'd say um, and some of these brewers have been working here for 30 years you know so they know these tanks in and out they know each nozzles little you know tricks um, I don't know, I think it has to do with the history of, of craft brewing and being a part of that and also seeing where it's going is pretty cool because this is where it started and look how far it's gone. Um, yeah, Geary's is definitely like a house name up here in Portland. I think the thing that's special about Geary's um, is that it's still a very family-run operation. Geary himself is here every day, you know, kind of making sure everybody's doing their job, yelling at people, goofing around. He's a funny old man. I think not only did he bring back the recipe for the pale ale, but he also brought back a lot of the dry British sense of humor. So it's tough love with him, but he's a good guy. <laughs> and Kelly, his daughter, is still running the show here, so she's the director of operations, and she has her hands in every step of the process, whether it's ordering the ingredients, making sure the beer's okay, shipping, distribution, this tasting room. Uh, so it's pretty special to be able to say I'm one of a very small team that's keeping Geary's alive, you know, and, and making this beer and making sure it's just as good, if not better, than it was 30 years ago when they started. So there you have it. Maine truly is a craft beer drinker's playground. Whether you are here for a visit or here for a lifetime, Maine will always have amazing craft beer just waiting for you to drink it. I encourage you to go to all the breweries you saw here today as well as all of the other ones that aren't featured here.
get out there and enjoy a cold one. <laughs>